We will create a peak model for the silicon 2P spectrum you see here. And this is a nice simple one to start with because we've got an elemental peak and an oxide peak. And we need to create at least two doublet pairs, possibly more, to represent these data. So the procedure will be as follows. You bring up the quantification parameters dialog window and the first thing is to create yourself a background. And the background has come in, in this case, as a default of Shirley. And the peak model, in terms of components, component peaks that is, will appear on top of the background. We create these component peaks on the component property page. And before we start creating these peaks, what we'll do is we'll load a library that will give us line shapes that are different from the default library. The default library has come in and it is a Kratos library. So these RSFs correspond to a Kratos axis instrument which corresponds to these data which were acquired on a Kratos system. The line shape in this library they're all set to GL30. And just to illustrate that these can be changed, well, first of all the consequence of having a GL30 in the element library is that when I create a peak the GL30 comes in here and that's because it was in the element library. So what I'm going to do now is load an alternative element library and there's a directory casaxvs.lbd that can be populated with different forms of element libraries depending on the application. And In this, this case what I'm going to use is the Kratos sensitivity factors relative to the Fluorine 1S and also it'll have an LF line shape rather than a GL line shape so I'm going to select that one and load it. So now the library looks the same we've got RSFs that are the same but this time the line shape is a very specific line shape which is a, a Voigt function that is calculated from a Lorentzian convoluted with a Gaussian you know, with various uh, adjustments to assist in fitting the data. So now if I create a line shape the line shape comes in with the new line shape uh, value that was in the newly loaded library. Let me just delete these and start again. So what we want to do is create, after defining a background, a line shape. And we don't need that up anymore, so we'll close that. The reason I don't need that anymore is because the element transition field has been assigned correctly. So the element transition field is being used to pull out the appropriate entry in the element library when I create a peak. So I hold the shift key down and that allows me to adjust the width of a peak without making the area adjust. So if I don't have the shift key down you'll see that the height adjusts to maintain the area because there are known relationships between peak areas and this is an example of one where if I create a second one the area of this peak here is related to the first peak by a factor of 2. So if I divide the area of the first peak that's now in column A by 2, in other words multiply by 0 0.5 and I press return, I've now imposed a constraint in terms of area so when I adjust the controlling peak you can see that the area adjusts but the relative position does not adjust and nor does the forward half maximum because these are allowed to move freely. So if I press fit I now get a fit to the data based on using this relationship. I can similarly I could say that I need to have the forward half maxima need to be roughly the same so I will fit on the basis of that and having done it let's assess the displacement between these two peaks and well accept that that is a, a plausible offset and so we've now got a pair of peaks that are completely constrained in terms of area and the forward half maximum adjusts together and the 
position adjust together. So if I copy these I can use them when I want to work on the oxide peak here which should also be a doublet. So if I say paste I get another pair of peaks here. They overlap because they're in the same position and I can then adjust let us see which one I've moved. I've moved this one here and I need to just relax the constraint in terms of peak position by saying hash 5 and that gives me a bit more leeway to move this peak around and place it with the oxide. So now if I say fit I've got an oxide here and I've got a metal here or elemental here. So this is my oxide and I'll give that also the same name and this is going to be my elemental. And we can see a table that will be positioned over the data by going to the annotation property page components and if I just say apply you can see that I now get a table showing me the percent area taken from these peaks the area itself the line shape that was used the fourth half maximum and the position so there's an example of a very simple and peak fit that can be applied to data of this form